Hey guys, let's get more news about Warriors, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Report, Redick agrees to contract to become Lakers' next coach. Nearly two months after their season ended, the Los Angeles Lakers have finally found their new head coach. Former NBA sharpshooter, podcast host and ESPN broadcaster J.J. Redick has agreed to a four-year contract to become the Lakers' next coach, ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski reported Thursday, citing sources. Redick, who has no head coaching experience at any level, is a bold choice for a franchise with a storied history such as the Lakers. Redick's rise in his post-playing career has been meteoric. During the bubble season in 2020, his first foray into broadcasting was with his own production company, called 342 Productions. The company's first content was a podcast hosted by Redick called The Old Man and the Three. After retiring from the NBA following the 2021 season, Redick was hired as an analyst by ESPN and made his debut on November 3, 2021, as a studio analyst for the network's coverage of a game between the Brooklyn Nets and Atlanta Hawks. Redick's rise was prominent. Inside the corridors of ESPN, his voice became synonymous with sharp analysis and insightful commentary. None of that came as a surprise for those like myself, who followed his playing career. Redick learned the game from Hall of Fame head coach Mike Krzyzewski at Duke, where he was a two-time All-American and the 2006 National College Player of the Year. The Orlando Magic drafted him that same year and he quickly helped lead them to the 2009 NBA Finals, where they lost to the Lakers in five games. Redick came to Los Angeles in 2013 with the Clippers, where he played five seasons for the team, helping them reach the playoffs in all five. It was in the arena formerly known as Staples Center where we quickly learned that Redick's basketball IQ was off the charts and that one day he would be destined for more than just the broadcasting booth. Today, just three short years after his retirement, that potential has been realized as the Lakers have named him the 27th head coach in franchise history. Redick is considered a player's coach, and many inside the Lakers organization have compared him to a young Pat Riley. As a player, Redick's career was defined by his precision and understanding of the game. Something that's on fully display in his new podcast with his now star player, LeBron James. The podcast, launched during the postseason, is called Mind the Game, and it's co-produced by Reddick and James' respective production companies. Many believed it was those conversations with LeBron on the podcast that put Reddick on the Lakers' radar. On the show, the two break down the X's and O's of the game and discuss late-game strategies and defensive positioning. Reddick and James will now bring that same meticulous approach to the Lakers' sidelines during the upcoming season. Reddick was a sharpshooter throughout his career and is expected to emphasize three-point shooting, pace and space as he tries to rejuvenate the Lakers' offense. Reddick interviewed with the Lakers over the weekend and was hired just a few days later. His hiring comes less than a week before the 2024 NBA draft. Redick will have to learn on the job as fast as possible. His first move will be to hire a staff, hopefully with some veteran head coaches as assistants. Redick knows all too well the pressure that comes with the high-profile position as the Lakers' head coach. With stars like James and Anthony Davis on the roster, Redick will look to make the Lakers a championship contender both this season and into the future. In order to do so, he will need to foster a winning culture and understand the dynamics and roles with the star-studded lineup. Lakers fans, known for their passion and high expectations, have greeted the news with a mix of excitement and curiosity. NBA Rumors, Clay Thompson to call Warriors bluff by exploring free agency offers there's a very good chance that the 2024 NBA free agency period opens up with a bang this summer. At this point, you can't help but wonder if Clay Thompson switching jerseys could be part of those early off-season festivities. As the start of NBA free agency inches closer and closer, officially set to begin June 30th at 6 p.m., the evidence continues to mount surrounding the potential of Clay leaving the Golden State Warriors once the free agency window opens. 
at the very least, Clay intends to explore outside offers. According to a recent report from the Athletic Shams Charania, Clay is expected to seek offers elsewhere when free agency opens. What had been previously speculated has now been reiterated less than two weeks before the start of free agency. With the Warriors and Clay not close to a contract agreement, it appears as if the former is ready to seriously consider the possibility of signing with a new team this summer. Whether or not it will actually come to fruition remains to be seen. However, perhaps now more than ever, it appears as if there's a real chance that Clay has played his final game in a Warriors uniform. Admittedly, the Warriors are in a difficult situation heading into the offseason. With already one of the most expensive rosters in the league, they're expected to re-sign Clay to a hefty extension. As you would expect, that could create some difficult conversations in that front office. However, after re-signing Draymond Green last summer, it would make little sense for Golden State to punt on Clay now. That's why despite these recent reports of Clay being at odds with the Warriors, it would still be somewhat of a surprise if he and the team didn't come to some sort of resolution. Even if it does come at the expense of an Andrew Wiggins trade at some point this offseason. At least for now, the Warriors and Clay appear to be playing one expensive game of chicken. This is not all that surprising in the business that is the NBA, especially of late. However, if the two sides aren't careful, this is the type of situation that can result in no winners. Evan Turner takes odd dig at Corny Steph, Clay, as NBA duo. Whether you agree or not, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown proved to be the best star duo in basketball this season after leading the Boston Celtics to the franchise's 18th NBA championship. While times have changed since, there once was another dynamic duo running the league in the Bay when Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and the Warriors made five consecutive NBA Finals appearances and won four titles through their dynastic run together. Despite Golden State's success on the court, former NBA guard Evan Turner explained to former Warriors forward and NBA champion Andre Iguodala on their Point Forward podcast why he believes Curry and Thompson failed to capitalize on that success at the time, and why their failure to do so presented other young stars with those opportunities. The best of the best is still coming, Turner said. These kids are 16 and jumping out the gym, doing all this crazy stuff. If you look at Jason and Jalen, it's like ST, you going to find me another two better than that right now? And since they won a championship and they're on 10, they might as well do an R&B album. They're going to be rich as hell, winning. Like imagine if Clay and Steph weren't corny as fuck, bro. They had the world in a chokehold. Them little dudes were on fire. It's dangerous. Curry is a 10-time NBA All-Star two-time scoring champ, two-time NBA MVP, and finals MVP. His fellow Splash Bro has made five NBA All-Star appearances and been named to the All-NBA third team twice. Their lights-out three-point shooting changed the game of basketball, but Turner believes they should have taken advantage of the marketing opportunities away from the hardwood. Iguodala argued the same could be said about Tatum regarding the corny label, although he clarified he doesn't believe the Celtics forward is corny but that's just the league-wide perception. Turner then retracted his words and emphasized that Curry and the Warriors could have better seized the moment during a historic dynasty. I'm not calling Steph and them, are, corny, I'm just saying during the time where the hats were off about marketing and how an athlete could be represented, you had two beige dudes, Turner said. They should have had the world. Steph Curry shoes should be Jordan's, dog. That's all I'm saying. Iguodala said he wouldn't necessarily put that on Curry, Turner made one final marketing point. From a marketing standpoint, Turner continued. Y'all were by far one of the best teams ever. The best team ever. And you had the best shooters ever. The worst thing that ever happened to them was they fired Mark Jackson because there goes the marketing pitch. While it'd be safe to say that Curry and Thompson likely won't be coming out with an R&B album anytime soon, the two have found plenty of success and happiness away from basketball. And if being a four-time NBA champion is the new corny, sign us all up.
and you fan? What do you think of the situation of Evan Turner? Leave your opinion in the comments.